What is up, guys? Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, if you're not in the United States, then happy Thursday, I guess, or Friday, or whatever day you're watching this on. I hope you're having a great one, and you're staying safe and sane in these crazy times we're living in. I want to talk to you guys about some things that I've gotten a lot of comments about, different items I use in my videos or on my Instagram that people are saying, hey, what is that, where do I get that? And I figured, hey, I don't know if you guys know this, holiday season is right around the corner. Actually, I think we're technically in it. So this is a whole bunch of stuff that I think will make really great gift ideas for either one of your family members, your friends, or maybe yourself. Now, some of these things are specific to pilots only. Some are just things that I think everyone should have because they're awesome and I use them and I enjoy them. So we'll basically call this rad that Trent recommends. I'm Trent Palmer, I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. Now some of these are going to be pretty inexpensive, some of them get more expensive obviously, and some apply really only to pilots, some it's like everyone should have this. So we're gonna start with one that applies specifically to pilots, and that is the in-flight cam smartphone audio record cable. And basically what this does is it plugs in line to your headsets, so basically this goes into your audio panel, this goes out to your headset, and what it does is it spits out a little 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack. Now this one is specific for smartphones because it's got a different number of pinouts. Basically it's got four different places of contact instead of three like a regular microphone cable. So you just know that you can't use this for cameras and smartphones, it's one or the other. So this is what I use when I am doing my Instagram stories or if I'm filming something on my phone in the airplane and I wanna be able to get cockpit audio. Obviously it's gonna have anything that goes through my intercom. So when I'm feeding in music, any of the radio calls, any of that stuff. And this right here is filming on my cell phone, as you guys can see. Another beautiful day out. The traffic, Freedom Fox on a right crosswind for 2-6. Touch a ghost. Ed. And now obviously the iPhone no longer has a headphone jack, so I just used their little adapter that came with the iPhone that goes from the headphone jack to a lightning cable. It goes right into your phone. Voila. All right, now the next thing that I think every pilot should have, but honestly anyone that does any sort of outdoor adventuring or really ever spends any time kind of out of cell service, I highly recommend one of these Garmin InReach uh, satellite communication devices. These things are primarily used as a PLB or personal locator beacon. They do have a SOS button, so you can push that button anywhere in the world and they will get help coming to you. I think the average response time is less than two hours, again, anywhere in the world. But the cool thing about these is that they do allow two-way messaging, so you can either connect it to your phone or you can painstakingly type it on here if your phone's dead, but you can actually message back and forth with friends or family. Also, it allows people to track you, so you can turn on the tracking function and share a unique link that you can send off to any of your family and friends, and they can see where you're at. I use this all the time when I'm flying, so Haley can kind of track and make sure I'm making it to my destination. And honestly, a lot of times, even on my film shoots, I end up off the grid or out of cell range for a, you know an entire day or sometimes multiple days at a time. So something like this is super useful because again, you're able to message and at least check in and make sure everything's all good back at home. All right, now if you were gonna have one camera and one camera only for filming flying or any adventuring, a 360 camera is the way that I would go. Now the reason I'm recommending these is because they honestly can cover a lot more than just any other single camera can. If you mount this in your cockpit and then plug in the audio through their little audio adapter that they make, the mic adapter, Again, this is the Insta360 version, but then you can have cockpit audio. You're able to show not only you as the pilot, but your surroundings as well. You know, line up on center line, get that tailwheel straight. I'm gonna hold the brakes, ease into full throttle, hold that stick back, release the brakes. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, flaps and rotate get you off the ground. So for one camera, you can kind of cover the world and then also mount it out on your wing strut like I do and have that invisible selfie stick that gives some really cool angles. All right, now the next topic is fuel storage and handling. Basically, these are two ways that I'm getting fuel around that a couple people have commented on. The first one that you've seen probably in a lot of my videos are these fuel bags that you get from Airframes Alaska. A lot of us call them bush bags just because Airframes makes the bush wheels. But these things are awesome because they fold up super small. Obviously, as it sits empty, I can stuff it on its side in my baggage bay and put two of them and then sandwich everything up against them. They're empty, which is how I fly with them. But something like these bush bags allow us when we're on these cross-country trips to just jump into a crew car at the airport or even jump on the one wheel, 
ride to a car gas station, fill these up with regular unleaded gas, and fill our planes up. Now the other thing is these works containers, which I just recently learned about, and they are rad. Now prior to this, I was filling up like four or five gallon gas cans and then, you know, hoofing them up onto my shoulder, trying to pour it into the plane. It was just cumbersome, and honestly a royal pain. Now these works containers, they each hold almost 20 gallons. They're stackable, so you can stack them three tall, so you could store technically 60 gallons wherever you need. And because they have a pump that is both AC or DC, all you gotta do is jump up, put this in the fuel cap and fill up. So nice. I also have a, a yellow one that I use for diesel for the skid steer. So these things are rad. They are a little bit heavier, so normally if I fill it up, I just do it in the bed of my truck top it off and then back the truck up to the airplane to fill out of. I know the guys at works are talking about building a little dolly or some sort of cart for these things that would make it a lot easier to kind of move around when they're full because 20 gallons is like 120 pounds, so. These guys are called grip mats. And I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but they are awesome little containment trays for when you're working on something. They are flexible and they're sticky, so they grip to whatever you're working on. So instead of fumbling around and having tools fall off of whether it's an airplane or your car or motorcycle or whatever it is, these grip mats make it so where you can hold all your tools and nuts and bolts on whatever you're working on without them sliding off. Such a simple little thing, but seriously, so nice to have. So I've got every different size, but yeah, check out Grip Man, the red. All right, now this is something that I keep on me at all times. It is the Leatherman Skeletool CX, I think. It's just the carbon version. Anyway, the Leatherman Skeletool, any of them are, are fine, but I cannot tell you how much I use this little thing. I honestly feel more naked if I forget this than like leaving my cell phone at home. I can't, it's, it's crazy how much I use this. It's got, you know, just a regular blade, which I used to carry just a knife and you use that for like what? Opening packages and that's like it or fiddling with. But um, this thing also has, you you know, pliers with wire cutters on them, which I have used that's actually saved us. One of the times uh, we were out flying, my buddy Toby, his trim lever on his pacer broke or, or the pin that held it in fell off while we were out flying. And we ended up finding a little pile of old barbed wire. I was able to cut a little piece and we made a little pin for him to get home and, and at least get him out of the bush and have a, a usable trim. So wire cutters are great, pliers are great, and also has screwdrivers. I can't tell you how much I use that as well, whether I'm checking the oil on the plane or uh, you know putting camera plates on my cameras. You would be blown away by how much more you get done when you just have the tool on you at all times. And I think that's where this skeletal tool fits in. It's like small enough that it doesn't bother you in your pocket, but it has enough tools that you can get pretty much everything done with just this. So these things, swear by them, love them, love them in skeletal. And last, but certainly not least, you guys didn't think I was gonna forget the one wheel, did you? Now, I know you guys have all seen these in my videos. I can't tell you how much I enjoy riding the one wheel and how useful it's been. And I gotta be honest, I was kind of a naysayer. A bunch of my buddies jumped on the one wheel train before I did. And I kinda, I had an electric skateboard at the time and I'm like, you know, it's not that useful. I, you know, I'm, I'm never actually using it. But the one wheel, because of its ability to not only go almost 18 miles on a charge, but how um, it can go off-road and carry you up hills, and you can use it with both hands free, meaning that I can put a backpack on, have a hand holding my camera and another one holding my water bottle, and I can cruise around. And you can't do that with like a bike or an electric skateboard or anything else. Also, they're just super fun to ride and they're super easy to transport in your plane. They honestly are like having an Uber with you anywhere you go. Because they're so small and compact, they can fit in pretty much any airplane. So I can put them in my baggage bay, but like you guys have seen a lot of times, I just put it out on my wing strut. That way it doesn't take up any baggage space. There's not much drag added and it's right on my CG. So it doesn't even affect my center of gravity. One wheels are rad. I know they're expensive, they're like 1800 bucks, but if you can afford them and you think you're gonna use it, you won't regret it. All right guys, that's it on flying products. Last thing I wanted to touch on was saying a huge shout out and thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As you guys know, Squarespace has been a huge supporter of this channel and for those that don't know, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a website and run your business. You start with one of their award-winning templates, you craft it into your own professional, beautifully built website, and they also have all the back-end tools you could want from marketing tools and analytics so that you can run your business effectively. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to purchase, go to squarespace.com slash Trent Palmer, it's gonna get you 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.